I will start off uh, with a guy we mentioned earlier in the show, Trey Mann of the Charlotte Hornets. He is 34% rostered in his first three games with the Hornets. He's averaging about 14 points on 46% from the field and 46% from deep. That also includes seven rebounds, seven assists, and just over a steal. It seems like LaMelo is going to come back after the All-Star break. We don't know. Charlotte is incredibly dodgy with their injury injury reporting and their updating. Uh, But even so, even if LaMelo comes back right after the All-Star break, I think Charlotte's going to prioritize man uh, in the rotation, not ahead of LaMelo, but just in general. I think you'll operate probably as a six-man or potentially even start, like Shaggin mentioned, over like Cody Martin. I think you'll probably get minutes in the high 20s. Uh, given what he's shown as a passer, that's probably going to be enough for him. And they got other guys that can kick out of the rotation. I mean, I'm not, I mean, Vasily Micic has been playing 20 minutes. Is that really going to continue? Are they going to keep, are they going to keep giving 20 minutes to Seth Curry, 12 minutes to uh, Bertans? Like there is room for all, for LaMelo and Trey Mann uh, to play. My first waiver wire suggestion is AirPods himself, Brandon Podjemski. He's back in the starting lineup uh, as he, he's been moving in and out of the starting lineup uh, for the Warriors all season. Uh, but as we alluded to during the the news section, Clay Thompson is now being deployed in a reserve role for the foreseeable future. And I just love what, what AirPods has been able to provide. He, he's been very solid for the Warriors all year. Uh, as a starter, he's seen a nice increase in production. 14 starts this year. He's averaged 31.6 points, 11, 11.4 points, 1.4 steals, 4.5 assists, 7.1 rebounds, which is pretty wild for a 6'4 guard. Um, you know, 30 plus minutes seems like it's going to be a sure thing with him in the starting lineup last night, even with Clay Thompson going off um, when he came off the bench. AirPods was able to play 34 minutes. Pajemski is rostered in, let's see, 47% of Yahoo rosters. That should certainly be higher. So I, I think he needs to be rostered uh, in most 10 team, if probably all 10 team leagues. Uh, go scoop him up. My next waiver wire suggestion, speaking of the Jazz, Keontae George, who is 27% rostered. On February 12th, he was named the starter going forward. Uh, yes, he has started three straight games, but he's seen at least 25 minutes in six straight. So this was coming for a little while. In this uh, in this six-game stretch, he's averaging, averaging 16 points on 46% from the field, 47% from deep. It's going to decline a little bit. Uh, but five assists, 3.3 rebounds, 1.2 steals. He was having huge efficiency issues at the beginning of the season, as we all know. As people in category leagues were like wringing their hands, do I keep him? Do I drop him? He's taking my field goal percentage. But since December, he's he's forty two percent from the field and thirty seven percent from deep. So now he's he's in the competent zone. Uh, who is your second waiver wire suggestion, Shannon? Ao Desumu for the Chicago Bulls, a guy we talked about a lot this season. He is forty four percent rostered on Yahoo. Top. 50 player over the past week with averages of 20 points and 4.7 three-pointers uh, in 37 minutes per game uh, in, in the past three games. You know, fr- friendly reminder, no Zach Levine for the remainder of the season. Uh, you have Caruso has been, a, a, has been questionable basically every game for, I don't know, the past month or two. Um, the sumo should continue to see tons of run for the chicago bulls and he you know as as alex and ken and i have all talked about he's shown growth on the offensive end he's been more aggressive uh yeah even the, he just scored a career high 29 points against atlanta uh he took 18 field goal attempts that game uh i expect you know there could be scenarios like with the minnesota game a week ago where chicago goes with a twin tower set up depending on matchup but other than that one game, Desumu started eight of nine. So I expect, I fully expect he will be locked into the starting lineup or starting 90% of the games here on out and playing 30 plus minutes. Uh, I think he's worth a look. 12 teamers, no doubt. Uh, some 10 team leagues, he's going to be, be an option as well. Olenek, he is one of my waiver wire suggestions. So I'll, I'll do the rundown here. He's 35% rostered, got traded from Utah to Toronto. Um, he exited the most recent game for Toronto due to a back strain. So throw that one out the window, seven minutes played. 
Before that, he played 43 total minutes in two games, 28 points, 11 rebounds, five assists, and six steals with a block total in those uh, 43 minutes. Look, it's kind of a weird trade. Uh, they got a Baji in the trade too. Uh, we were kind of unsure about what they were going to do with Olenek in terms of like how much they're going to play him. I think they like him out there as a floor spacing look at the five around Scotty Barnes. Um, and that isn't a floor spacing five that isn't Chris Boucher. Uh, and uh, I, it's working so far. Olenek and Barnes have played 31 minutes together. All right. My next waiver wire suggestion. I'm actually, we'll, we'll do a little two for one here. Yo, Ken had the gaggle uh, of Grizzlies last week. We're just going to trim that down to a duo. Uh, Zaire Williams, who is officially my long shot of the week. Uh, guard forward from Memphis, 1% rostered. So he's available everywhere. You can go get him. He's coming off a career game. Scored a career high 27 points in 36 minutes. Also had four rebounds, four assists, three steals. Uh, he was four for seven from downtown uh, which is nice to see because he hasn't been the greatest uh, shooting from downtown. He, he's, he hasn't been shy about it. He he is hitting uh, 1.2 three-pointers per game this year, but but only 32%. Um, I've always kind of had a crush on Zaire Williams. Thought he could do more. It was nice to see last night um, in that game against that that massive upset win against the Bucks, which is hilarious. Uh, but Zaire Williams with forty, almost forty five fantasy points for DFS. He's had he's flirted with that before. He had thirty two fantasy points a couple weeks ago against Orlando. This team is so short handed and is going to be a revolving door uh, of players that I do think Zaire Williams is worth a streaming option in the short term. Um, the other option from Memphis that, that I like a lot is the young man, G.G. Jackson. He had another big game, uh, 30 minutes, 27 points. Uh, not much outside of scoring. One rebound, zero assists, zero steals, one block, but he was 10 for 17 from the floor, 6 for 10 from downtown. Good for 28 fantasy points in that win over the Bucks. He, he hasn't started. He's only made one start so far this season, so he's coming off the bench seeing... Seeing a decent roll off the bench for Memphis. I mean, he's played 20 or more, more minutes in six straight games. He has one DNP in there as well, where he's essentially rested. Uh, I still like Gigi. I do think they might uh, uncork him towards uh, the final stretch of the season, and he's out there playing 35 minutes per. So Gigi, not as uh, heavily or not as as heavily available as Zaire Williams. Uh, he is rostered in 34 percent of leagues. He, he's a guy if you need. Three pointers, scoring. GG Jackson's an option. Efficiency will be an issue, though. So he is a, a risk on that end in categorical leagues. All right. Uh, my final waiver wire suggestion Corey Kispert of the Washington Wizards, 15% rostered, has clearly been given the green light, uh, practically irradiated green light. Past eight games for Kispert, 17 points with three threes, at 50% for the field, 35% from three. 3.9 rebounds, 2.5 assists in 28 minutes. Wizards have three games next week, so stream them in. Absolutely. 